Here we go. And at the bottom right position is the yellow Zerg, we have Dragon Pain. And at the 12 o'clock position is the Peach Protoss, we have the Suckway. Alright, now, after that game won, and considering how it looked so good for the Sakwe for such a long time, uh, I'm a little bit afraid for, this, you know, how the Sakwe is feeling about this. Yeah, I, I think that's actually the most important thing, because on the one hand, it's like, oh, you know, I'm going to two-gate in the first game to, you know, throw off my opponent. Even if it doesn't work, it's okay, because it's only the first game in the series. But you have to make sure that it doesn't put you on tilt if you lose, especially like that. You know, you don't want it to backfire, and it's like your plan to, to make the other guy, you, you know, go on tilt actually makes you go on tilt, and then you just end up losing games in a silly fashion. So, you know, hopefully Desakwe has the uh, the mental fortitude to to keep his game plan on track. He's uh, he's going for the normal pylon at the top here to uh, hopefully just do a normal forge fast expand. I don't think you can do a gateway expand on this map. I'm actually, I'm not sure. Let me see. Gateway, I mean, maybe. I don't know. Anyway. Hmm. I mean, well, I'm pretty sure that uh, the Sakwe knows if he can pull that off. Now, the thing is, one thing that I found pretty uh, interesting, Dragon is going again for overpool, which nowadays, as far as I understand, is the most standard style to play against Protoss, because it forces uh, probably the Forge before the Nexus. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think that would be... That'd be fine. He could even just go Forge Nexus, uh... Oh! Uh... Actually, can you go Forge Nexus Cannon in, the, in this distance? Maybe, maybe Cannon first? I don't know. Hmm. It's an overpool. Maybe one Cannon first and then Nexus? I was watching, um, today, Effort versus Free, and Free did that, which was, uh, Forge Nexus Cannon, but that was, I think, on Electric Circuit. Yeah. So, on this map... I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure it's a good idea. Uh, well, he is also. De you know what? Since he's delaying the hatchery so much, oh, just as I say that the hatchery goes down. Um, he is actually going Nexus first. I was gonna say if you delay the hatchery by a lot, sometimes you actually end up making the Zerg go for more Zerglings. So it might be smarter to go for a cannon first. But actually, the Zerg is just building the drones as normal. Um, did he even make? Okay, he did make the one pair of Zerglings and then the two extra drones. So very very standard stuff. Uh, he even had a drone here at his at the other natural to uh, potentially make the third uh, third hatchery, uh, third base, uh, just in case he kept getting blocked at the natural too long. Yeah. At the same time, the, there is one interesting thing is that because this is a three-player map, playing against this style usually forces the Protoss to go for some kind of a heavy two-base commitment, and we've seen that work relatively well for the Sakwe against Trudach, but I don't know, I'm not sure if he wants to try again the same thing, because I'm pretty sure Dragon saw those games. And if he was practicing with Draw, probably Draw gave him some other tips beside the careful for the two gateways proxy. Yeah. Hmm. Um... Alright, let's see. Uh, so, gateway is up, the next is not finished yet, and the gas mining, so... Now, no two gate after the Nexus, so that's not going to be a heavy pressure. Yeah, it looks very normal for both players here after the shenanigans from last game. Um, the the fact that the nat the third hatchery is at the other natural is good. It also you know is putting pressure on the Protoss. Um, again, don't want to don't want to let the Zerg get the two thirds in the map. It's a problem on three player maps uh, when the Zerg takes another natural is they just get control of too many of the bases if it goes to the late game. Uh, which the Sakwe usually likes, although given what happened last game, maybe maybe he's mixing up a little bit. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see what he does here. Yeah, I mean, you did mention. Uh, I mean, in previous casts as well, that he does like this kind of longer style. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. And on Aztec, it would feel like it's maybe on Fighting Spirit makes a lot of sense because you have practiced a lot on that map. On this map, however, because of what you mentioned, that you know it's kind of a split of three areas for the Zerg and sorry, uh, two areas of the map and one for the Protoss, it might not be the best course of action. Yeah, I, I definitely don't think you should play a play a long play a long game on Aztec uh, for for those reasons. But 
I don't know what kind of build he should do though. I, I don't have any recommendations for him like me. You know what actually? Sir Reaver I think is that is quite strong on this map. I don't know if Tasakwe actually goes for Sir Reaver or is you know practiced that much. He is getting plus one for the Corsairs at least, so could potentially think about something like that. But yeah, Sir Reaver well, definitely strong. Yeah. Uh, the forge is spinning, so it's plus one for the zealot. So uh, sorry for grand. Yeah. So it's not going to be corsair reaver. But the thing is, when you go for bo both upgrades, you want to go for a mid game heavy hit, and the, and at least dragon saw the forge, so he knows that the plus one is being built, is being reset. So that probably tells him quite a lot about what Zuck was going to be doing. Yeah, plus one sir, plus one speed lot. I do actually like this opening as well. It's one of the openings that lets you put pressure on in the mid early mid game, which uh, a lot of other Protoss builds are, you know, a little bit slower in that regard. So that's definitely good. You know, you don't want the Zurich to just do the the quick four base opening and, and just get too comfortable in his macro. Keep the pressure on. Get yourself some map control and uh, and then see where you play from there. Uh, I definitely like this style. It's also more fun to watch because you know you don't have to sit around and wait for anyone to do stuff. Oh, we actually yeah. have plus one carapace for the air as well, coming uh, coming from Dragon, so I I guess he just expects something like this? That's interesting. It, make, it kind of makes sense if you see the forge. I, I assume that, I, unless it's a heavy ground attack, yeah. then... I'm, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it could be like something like what DeWalt did to take out uh, Eon Zerg, where he just does like a huge plus one Zell speed lot attack and just killed everything. Yeah, but the, the gateways uh, are being added very slowly, though. So, if this is going to be a strong attack, because if you keep building probes constantly, it kind of cuts into your chance to make that strong attack work. Yeah, that's true. It's definitely true. Oh, one scourge getting grabbed here by the finishing cannon. We are actually seeing the fast four base. So, Dasakwe is going to have to do something to punish this. One nice follow up from this uh, speed lot. Sarah thing is to go for you know DTs and maybe drop them into the main. Uh, that's a super effective way of dealing with that base. You can you're almost guaranteed to kill it actually if you if you drop like four DTs in there or even like two Zelds and two DTs with your Corsairs um, because typically uh, the Zerg will have like slower Overlord speed here. He obviously has more base to cover. Yeah, you can see Overlord speed hasn't even started yet uh, for mm. for Dragon. That's the thing. He, he has to cut something to to get this earlier macro going. He also invested the gas in the carapace. I was thinking there's even a better way to go about this. Instead of trying to just kill the Ford, the four base, the fourth base, you basically have like two zealots, one DD, and one High Templar. You drop the fourth, but you don't shoot <laughs> the shuttle, and you go for the High Templar storm on the third. And usually the drones are going to be pulled, so you can get a very juicy storm. Yeah, yeah, that's another nice sneaky thing to do. Basically, he should probably drop, is what we're saying, yeah. <laughs> of, of some description. <laughs> uh, but I don't, I don't actually see a roadway yet though, so it looks like he's actually not going to do that. He's getting additional gateways. Um, but the, pro the problem is if you... I mean, Zerg is going to be doing like all this kind of sim city stuff because you know he knows he's going to be a bit weak. He's, getting, he's, he's playing greedy, he wants the macro to get the macro going. So he's going to build uh, you know, a lot of sunkens, the spore colonies, and on Aztec the naturals aren't like super wide or anything, so it's pretty easy to get a sim city. You can see how tight these buildings are. So just running in with a ground army is going to be quite difficult. Yeah. I, I think... I think it's really scary what the deck was trying to pull, because he's now taking a third, but it's a mineral only. Yeah. And... It's still going to be four bases against three. So... I don't know. I, I don't like too much the sack was uh, thought process, if we could call it that, of going for this... You know, continuing upgrades is pretty good for him, like the ground, but it's still not going to be enough to keep himself safe. And it's mostly Zealot, so it's not like he's going to have like a very strong push, because you, if you don't have any Dragoons to bust through the Sunkens, then just the Zealots are probably not going to cut it. Yeah. Ah. Dude, there are a lot of Scourge already. Like, the Corsairs didn't even show themselves yet, and he had a ton of Scourge waiting, and here we go. The Scourge are coming in from the bottom. They're coming in from the natural. The Scourge at the front. Oh, running in a little bit. Man, does Sakura have to be so careful here? I don't know if... I, I mean, I guess Dragon saw this coming. He, he, he probably scouted it, actually, with the Scourge that flew in earlier, but he's getting prepared. Oh, man, the Scourge go in, but they actually don't get that many hits. In the middle, it looks like. I, I don't know if they even killed a single... Uh, Single Corsair there, that big yeah, one of the Scourge. Yeah, one down. Okay, only one 
fell. These are plus one Corsairs, so they do take down the Scourge super fast, even though they do have the plus one Carapace. And they're now looking around for Overlords. Probably the There's a big bunch of Overlords at the Natural, but there are Hydras and a Spore Colony there, so not really going to be able to do too much. Um, but I, I don't like how passively Dasakwe is playing this. His third base is slower than the Zerg's fourth, and he's just putting yeah. no pressure on at all. I mean, the only thing that I would understand if he was doing this is if he tr actually tried to take the other third with the gas and then switch to something really heavy on the tech to, come, to really go for the late as soon as possible. He's building two DTs now, and if that is for Dark Arkan, then uh, okay, I can understand <laughs> that. But if I... it's... No, it's for draws because there's shuttle also the natural being built, so... Yeah, I would be quite surprised to see a DT this early without any Mutalisks flying around. Um... Even even the Sockway is not uh, not crazy enough to do that. Uh, although having said that, he is crazy enough to go fast arbiters against True Touch. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe he is crazy enough to do that. Was it on this map actually that he went arbiters against True Touch? I think it was, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah. All right. Keep an eye out for an arbiter tribunal then. That would be uh, that'd be quite exciting. To be fair, I think that's actually a pretty decent strategy on Aztec. Uh, it's pretty easy to like recall the mains and stuff, and it's annoying to go back and defend them. So, I don't it's know. legit, dude. It's legit. Trust me. I don't like it too much because it cuts into your gas so heavily, and at the same time, you can get picked off by Scorch. And most of the units, because when you do it against Terran, usually Terrans don't have anything that shoots up, so the Arbiter is safe for a very long time. But if you do it against a, a Zerg, and he has like 25 Hydras, um, I don't know. That doesn't seem like a good idea. It's true. Oh, it looks like a few Zerglings running in here to try and stop the fourth base of the Protoss. Meanwhile, the shuttle... The shuttles went next to some Zerglings, but I don't know if there was a vision range, because Zerglings have slightly smaller vision range than other units. So Ooh. I don't actually know if it saw it. I mean, it clearly didn't because it's not reacting, but here we go. Four DT drop. There's two Sunkets, but no detection in here in the base. All the Overlords are at the natural here. These DTs could do massive damage. There's also double Evos here. He could actually stop both of the upgrades as oh, well, which man. would be really nice. I think he should go for drones, and then the hatchery, and then the Evos. The Evos are actually quite a high priority target right now. He could even just go for the Sunkets here. Yeah, it looks like he's just not paying attention anymore. It doesn't even matter what they attack, as long as they attack something. The Overlords are coming in, but there's nothing left to kill it. The Hydra's like right here. He should go for the Evos, I think. I don't think he should fight. I think he should go for the Evos. He's gonna one of the evolution chambers it looks like thanks to the corsairs blocking these overlords no where did he go oh he stopped Wait. he should kill it he should kill it definitely why uh, i'm so sad there's no overlord here he could just run in and kill it but he doesn't know that <laughs> why dts you failed me but to be fair uh the sacwa did take a fourth while all of that was happening yeah so uh, it actually doesn't look that bad for him. It's, de it's definitely good. I mean, you know, sure he lost three DTs. He killed the whole drone line. One thing you have to remember, though, is when the Zerg has this many hatcheries, I mean, look at this. There's, there's, six ha there's five hatcheries just on the left side of the map. And, uh, and that means he can rebuild his drones extremely quickly. So doing a big hit, hit like that, while it looks fancy, you have to keep in mind, you know, the way Zerg works, the way Locker works, it's very easy for Zerg to actually rebuild a drone line. Uh, compared to, you know, compared to other races, like if you killed the whole yeah. probe line, it'd, be, it'd take much longer for the Protoss to rebuild that. Um, so I think it would have been really, really nice to get these, yeah, at least one of these Evo chambers. But as it is, he's still doing okay, you know, he's, he's getting up to even bases with the Zerg, although he's down a gas. Uh, so we'll have to see how, what he does from here. The only problem that I see is that the Sakwe supply is surprisingly close to dragons, and it usually should be a lot higher. Oh, the T coming up. Killing a few more drones, but uh, yeah, definitely the Evo Chamber was a higher priority. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was good of uh, Dragon to build a Spore here this time. I'm actually surprised there were two Sunkens before and there was no Spore, considering uh, he didn't actually have any Overlord coverage there. Um, bit of a bit of a small mistake, but anyway, we do have the main army here. For some reason, the shuttles just chilling with the army, even though it's empty. I don't. I, I guess he must just have it on a hotkey with some of the units. We should, okay, he looks like he realized. Oh no. He realized it, but then he sent it back. I guess it's on some random hockey that he doesn't realize. So he's just yeah. going to chill with the army. That's cool. Oh, running into Lurker Field, though. That's not cool. Oh, man, he's taking a lot of damage. Oh, man, he's taking way too much damage on the Zealots. The Zealots are all clumped up for these uh, for these Lurkers. Oh, oh, God. The Zealot Massacre. Oh, man, that's... Oh, what a... That's terrible engagement. Man. 
Oh. I do not think the Sockway expected there to be Lurkers this far forward on the field. Uh, and just ran headlong into them, getting Gazella Force absolutely destroyed here. Down to 141 supply against 137. Pretty much an even supply. However, it's still technically a base up for the Sockway. Uh, oh, well, okay, he's not a base up. It's, it's even bases, but in PvZ terms. The Zerg should always be ahead of base. And Sakwe is taking the middle base now as well to match the Zerg's fifth base. If he's staying even on bases, that's good. Wait, the he's making an Arbiter! Uh, <laughs> Sakwe is producing mostly Zealots and Dragoons. He doesn't even uh, have any High Templars, I think. No, he's got two High Templars, but that's... It's because his gas is going to Arbiters, man. He's getting Recall. He's getting an Arbiter. Here we go. Let's uh, go. Let's do it. I oh, don't man. know. That's my boy. I don't know. <laughs> you know, the funny thing about this is that most of the Hydras are starting to be workers. So there might not be actually enough to kill <laughs> the, the Arbiter when he shows up. Well, see, now this this is what I'm going to be the most interested to see. I'm sure Dragon knows the Sockway beat True t beat, uh, yeah, he beat True Touch with Arbiters on this map, right? Because he would have been thinking, you know, how did this guy beat True Dodge? Oh, let me watch this game. Arbiters. Wow, that's insane. How? What is his answer to Arbiters? Like, what is a good answer to Arbiters? You can make Scourge, but there's still, what is this, four plus one Sarah's in, in the air, right? So, and it's not easy to catch the Arbiter as well, because you can see on the minimap, he doesn't have Overlord scattered everywhere, because he, he's, there's still the threat of the Corsairs, so he can't have perfect vision. And so, you know, it's it's actually not super easy to stop the Arbiters. Oh, going out here with just that kind of force? Oh, trying to block, but failed. Fail fish. <laughs> the fail egg block. I mean, they would have got uh, killed pretty fast anyway, so... It, but you know what is funny? Because he actually had those Hydras very well positioned to do that, but he moved them to get two more workers out, and he just forgot to replace them. The position of the hydras. Oh man, and the Nidus Canal barely dies before it actually, uh, before finishing. So I, I don't know if that was actually the entrance or the exit. Like if that was the exit and he did the egg block properly, he might have got some units there in time. Uh, but either way, he's going for the counter attack here on the middle base. There are five cannons there already, and the Zealot reinforcements coming out here. The Zealots all over the lurkers, but they're getting massacred by the spies. But it doesn't. But it looks like actually their damage was enough here. Really, really nice move there. Instead of just A moving the Zealots in, he deliberately moved them forward so that they would get a nice surface area on the lurkers. But it looks like it doesn't matter. The base is going to fall here. But it looks like the army's not even coming back. He's just going to counterattack the counterattack. He's going for the natural, but there's so many lurkers, I don't think that's going to work. No, definitely not. And, and there's an Nidus Canal there, as well as a lot of Zergians already, so that would be really risky to try to get in there. He would probably get slaughtered. And at the same time, where does he go? Because yes, he killed a base and lost one base, but what, what's the next position where you want to go? There's one PT actually killing the Hydras that killed uh, the, the last expansion from Sakwe, but... That army from uh, Dragon is just looks very weak, because it's mostly Zealot Dragoon. Yeah, uh, I... I think that was a mistake there to attack the Naturals. I mean, realistically speaking, there's going to be such good defenses at the Zerg's Natural and at his third, like like both of the Naturals, that it's going to be really hard to attack whoa, into there. Oh, the drop! The oh! Drop. Were those all full? Yeah, all Zerglings. Oh my god, big catch there for the Sockway. And also a Supply Box Dragon. The Dragon's at 185 Supply already. Both players pretty much max. There's a Recall though! The Recall's in the main! The Recall is in the main! There are a few Hydras there, but nothing is enough to defend this. The Ultimus are coming out. But that Recall though is in here. There's a Greater Spire, an Ultimus Cavern, and a Defile Mount. All of these things could die, but all the Ultras suddenly pop out. He just needs Detection. No, he has Detection. There's a Spore here. Wow! Oh man, the recall does nothing. Why do I hear? Oh, there's another drop. There's another drop loaded up. Looks like the Protoss army that was going to the top left at the same time. There's a fresh base. I think it's gonna fall, but there's no mining there, so it's not a huge loss. Oh, uh, even if it fails, even if it dies, most of the army of the Protoss is actually dying in this bed, but as well. So I don't know. The the, the army from the Sakwa really looks weak. It definitely does. I, this is what I'm saying, man. I called it. Didn't I call it? I said to Sakwa in game number two, he's going to be winning the game, and then he's going to screw around with some <laughs> stupid unit, and then he's going to lose a 45-minute game and go on tilt. But Arbiters are not stupid. Okay, oh, that's true. 
Alright, he won he won against Judas that way, but Oh my god, this this overlord with Ultras to die. Oh no, you got him out of time. Oh baby, there's the drop. He stormed the probes, but actually the probes do manage to get out. Look at that carpet storm! The carpet bombing Zerg that gets carpet stormed, and that actually gets cleaned up. Wow, there were so many ultras there. And they all died. But with that base being so open, yeah, he's gonna some more units. We call the bottom left. Nico! Oh, that Rico is gonna do some damage. Oh my god, it looks like the ground army is gonna finish off the 3 o'clock base, but the recall at the bottom left is gonna be much more successful. There are the Phylos here, but there's no ultras. All the drones are tying. Zerglings coming out, but they're all on the rally point. They're not even attacking. Ultras coming back. Catspaw, I don't even know what's gone anymore. The sack was up in supply. Raised enough wait oh the nexus the nexus get the nexus oh the nexus is gonna live with 39 <laughs> hp <laughs> oh my god 39 hp nexus and the recall at the bottom left clean gets cleaned up oh one ultra can he run through lurker lurker just borrow you can get it, Kill it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh god oh wait he's got more units he might get it he just needs to drop like one crackling <laughs> Oh! oh! The stasis! Oh my god, is that even blocking the ramp? I don't know. Oh no, it looks like Zealots can run through it, but that stasis though. Holy. There's actually an Arkham now, but there's no detection for that one lurker, so. <laughs> oh, there's the Ops, there's the Ops. Oh my god, the Sakura is a genius. I take it all back, he's a genius. It has not replaced the drones on his oh on his fourth, so he's basically down to three bases, and the main is gone. The natural is about to be gone. Dude, the Sakura is not mining much either, though. He's only just now mining from the three o'clock again, but his first three bases are all mined out. So it's actually turning into kind of a low eco game right now. Look at the supplies; they were both maxed a few minutes ago, and now they're both down to like one ten to one thirty supply ish. Yeah. Whoa, man. Dragon just moly. needs to drop that base with one defiler and like 10 links and it's gonna go be gone. Oh my god, but he can't get in. He can't get in, there's cannons and stuff. There's cannons here. Ooh, the yeah, armor sees it. It's gonna, soon, it's gonna have soon enough energy for another stasis. Wait for it. 99, uh, Stasis soon! Yeah, The swarm stasis combo! <laughs> We just need a plague, and we got everything. Oh man, but the Dark Swarm is there. There's no Reaver here, so only the Zelts are really doing damage. Oh, but the, the Ultra can't quite get in though, he got blocked. He got body blocked. Oh, uh, but the Cracklings, the Cracklings, they're doing the damage. They're gonna break through, definitely. Oh, this time they're gonna break through. Does he not have a High Templar here? I don't see any High Templars. That's the problem when you go Arbiter, there's not enough gas for High Templars. He's got one in the queue, but it's like behind three Zealots. Still not attacking the Nexus. Oh god, but this is definitely gonna die. Probes first, why not? Oh man. Oh man, and the probes has to transfer back through lurkers. Oh. Did I call it or did I call it? The Sockway <laughs> in big trouble here, that's what happens when you go Arbiters. That's what happens. Nice. The Failfish. Okay, so the Sockway is down to one base. But the Zerg's only on two base. Wait, the Sockway's not mining the gas in the middle? What the heck? He didn't rebuild that gas. Wow, that's actually a huge mistake. He really yeah. needs the gas right now. And <laughs> you know what? Funny enough, Dragon is also on very low eco, so he's getting yeah. another base. But if he doesn't establish that base, uh, that's still hard for Dragon to win. Even if he gets that base, he's going to be mined out at the left side in just a second here, so he'll still be only on two bases. Yeah, that, that's why he actually needs it. <laughs> oh, oh, God. The are actually going to that base, and there's nothing to defend it. Nice, but the problem is there's a huge- look at this Ultraling army in the middle of the map though. Oh, oh, oh. He sees it! Oh, the DTs, they went the wrong place. <laughs> oh, they're uh, just gonna fight. No, I don't think they can do anything useful here. Nah. Sad times for those DTs. Hmm, what can Dragon do right now? Look, look at his army, he's got- <laughs> what the hell, man? Do you see what I'm talking about? This is what- this is exactly what I'm talking about. Oh man, he needs to bring an Arbiter to the left side and stasis the ramp to keep it alive or something. There are drops, you know that, right? <laughs> oh, you're right. I forgot about that. Like, like, I mean, at this point, Dragon should probably just drop 
with cracklings and just win the game. Oh, there's an arbiter here though. It's okay. The arbiter's gonna kill everything. It has plus one attack upgrade. It's fine. <laughs> there's two arbiters in the middle killing this overlord. Oh. These arbiters are gonna win the day. See, there's no anti-air map. The arbiters will win the day. Oh no, the skirt run! It's okay. Two skirts won't kill it because yeah. arbiters are OP. You need four skirts to kill an arbiter. Yeah, it's surprising how beefy actually arbiters are, considering how good they are. Yeah. Dude, that's that's one. I think that's like the main reason they're. Uh, well, not the, well, one of the reasons like in PvT, people generally just go like mass arbiter and don't really build high templar, even though storms are really good, because it's too easy for the uh, templars to get killed by accident, and like arbiters just never die. Oh, except that one. That one died. <laughs> I like how you said it pretty much like half a second before that one. Dude, died. That's cast a curse, man. That's like how that's how it is. Okay, so Dragon actually even took the mineral only. Wow. So <laughs> Dragon is gonna be back on good uh, economy like in the next one minute. And the Sakwa doesn't really have much of a way to get in the base. Oh <laughs> Stasis and Kill Rex. Nice. Oh no, the skirt! No! Oh god, okay, I don't think I don't think Dragon realized you only need 4 skirts, not like 10 to kill that, but... Oh my god, why is Dragon engaging here? I mean, I know he stasis half of the army, but I think he's still too weak to fight this. Yeah, doesn't oh. he know that stasis units can't get damaged or something? <laughs> oh god. Wait, I need, I need to cast a curse this. Okay, wait, um... There's no way that Zerg is gonna die here and lose this game. No way. Alright, come on, cast a curse, let's go. Cast a curse, let's go. Come on, kill it, kill it all! Yeah, he just needs to wait for the stasis to wear off, and then just to, everything, like, once the stasis wear off, all these units will group together and kill everything. And it's gonna catch actually one Arkan, maybe? Wait, what? What? Those Arkans, man. They're so big, but they somehow always get through. Dude, they're beefy too. Actually, wait a minute. Archons only have 10 HP more than an Arbiter. They're pretty much the same. What? Oh, okay. Yeah, if you add it up, the HP and the shields, Arbiter's 350, and uh, Archons are 360. It's pretty sweet. Oh, okay. Storm. What? Really? Right now, uh, Dragon Surge should be dropping the main. I mean, everything is there. You know that. So just drop like 20 cracklings on the main. Just destroy well, that. But the thing is, like, there's no need to risk it because the Protoss army is already pushed back, right? Like, he's not out on the map attacking, which is the best time to draw. And I think Dragon knows he's winning the game. Like, he knows he's starving out the Protoss. So, you know, why risk going for a big drop that might get caught and fail when you can just do this? You can just kill everything in the middle of the map. Oh man, these stasis. They look so cool, but they don't even matter at this point. Yeah, and also at the same time, the Dark Swarm is actually doing a number on this because, yeah. especially on the Archons, it's not that much. I think the Druggans at this point are re relatively not smart to build, I think. Dude, the, the, there's just so many ultras on the map now, it's actually insane. Like, you can stasis it all you want, but if you don't figure out a way to kill these guys somehow, like, you know, Reavers and Archons, it's... You're just never gonna win the game, right? Like, stasis doesn't kill anything. Yeah. GG! Oh. GG! <laughs> Desakwe types out of game number two, which means Dragon is now up 2-0 in the series. 2-0, right? Ooh, yeah. Oh, Oh. But that's okay, and because it's a best of seven. Well, I gotta say though, game one, I didn't think Dragon was gonna win. Game two, <laughs> actually, for more than one moment, I thought the Sakwa had a huge advantage. When he had like five bases and Dragon yeah. was only in his fifth. Except the only problem just what not taking his gas, making arbiters instead of something like Dark Arkans. <laughs> I I don't know. I mean uh. He had like four arbiters alive at some point. Like, imagine that's uh, that's eight Templar, right? That's more gas than eight Templar because an arbiter is three hundred and fifty gas, oh, man. Uh, and the Templar is only one hundred and fifty, right? So that that's like ten high Templar worth of gas invested in arbiters. And we saw what two or three recalls, very little effect from yeah. any of them this game. Um, I mean, the stasis was cool. There was like one good stasis at the three o'clock to defend to defend that, but yeah. he was already behind at that point, right? So, uh, I think I think I've, I've basically the thing that I was thinking about was would be wouldn't be much better to mix it up a little bit. If you want to get arbiters, you can have like two. I would say yeah. have one in your main and basically be ready to recall back if you get mass dropped. That would be for one. Yeah, and have another one with your army, but that's it. Don't I, anymore because he actually was trying to stasis, but if you look at that, he had three 
arbiters at the last moment, and he was stasising everything, which doesn't make any sense because you still can kill it. So, to be I honest, know. I like going by that game. I don't think stasis is worth it. I think the arbiter is a gimmick that should only be used for recalls. Okay, I mean, yes, if you have an arbiter and you're big in a big engagement, you might as well stasis. But having arbiters for that purpose is not worth it. You might as well. Yeah. I mean, would you rather have two storms or a stasis in like a huge engagement? I, I would rather have two storms to kill everything, right? Uh, you know, yes and no because if you have already a few high templars, you're not going to use all of the storms. So then you might have as one stasis and then try to segment, like use yeah. a the stasis as a fake wall to uh, like kind of funnel the Zerg army. So. One Arbiter, again, I understand one, because you're not going to have enough even APM to all, use all the spells at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, looks like our Russian casters are eager to get started, so uh, I'm just going <laughs> to start the game. We can we can keep okay. talking about this at the beginning of the next game. Yeah. But uh, game number three on Jade, here we go. 